Don't side chain, bro. Side chaining your 808 to your kick. All that does is make your 808 hit less. That right there was Kenny Beats. If you guys don't already know him, a very well established producer and audio engineer talking about side chaining and why you shouldn't. And although I do agree with him, I don't at the same time, and I'm gonna tell you exactly why. Hey, what is going on guys? Another vegan back with another video. That is a throwback right there. How to get your kick to punch through your 808. Oh, oh shit. How to get your kick to punch through your 808. Stay hard, pause, play, it's 2019, doesn't matter, but still sound clean at the same time. That's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. Pay attention because there's a lot of little steps in these techniques that you don't wanna miss. And with that being said, let's go straight into FL Studio and get our kicks to knock. All right guys, now that we're in FL Studio, let me start off by saying a couple things. Number one, I am not an audio engineer. I am just a dude who makes beats and videos and likes his beats to sound pretty clean sometimes. And these are just some of the things that I've picked up along the way that I think you guys can take some value from two at the same time now what i meant by not agreeing with an, an obviously professional engineer is i don't necessarily think that you should never side chain i just think that side chaining doesn't necessarily solve the problem i think it just throws a band-aid over the problem and that's the actual problem is that most people most producers aren't necessarily mixing they're kicking 808 well. They're just throwing a side chain over it to cover up the problem. So, all right, so right here, I have a classic spins 808. And the reason why people love this 808 so much is because it is so easy to mix with. Now, this version I have from my drum kit, I threw some isotope trash on it just to give it some more grit. Here's what it sounds like. like So as you guys can hear, that 808 already has a little bit of a kick in it, but I want more knocks. So what do you do? You go and copy and you press paste to add a kick. Now, the kick sounds fine, but we can get that kick to sound way cleaner. And here's the first thing that I usually do. Now, another disclaimer, not every kick and 808 relationship is going to be the same. One method that I like to do is adding just a little bit of delay in front of the 808, giving the kick just enough time to come in right before the 808 comes in. So let me show you exactly what I mean. Usually what I'll do is I'll go into the little envelope window right here and I'll turn all these knobs all the way down except for the hold. And now we have more control over the sample itself. So just to make sure that 808 plays throughout, I'm gonna go ahead and press control L and now it's playing all the way through. So what I like to do is usually, let me go ahead and mute this kick. I like to add just a small amount of delay and or attack. I usually play with these settings just to get it right, just to give the kick some space. If we go ahead and turn the attack up and turn the delay back down, maybe play with the tension a little bit. just a little bit just a little bit it kind of takes the kick away but what it also does is leaves room for the new kick to come in so let's go ahead and see what that sounds like with the new kick in now as you guys can see the kick is cutting through a lot cleaner that is going to lead us into our second tip which is side chaining now i do believe that side chaining can be a powerful mixing tool when it's followed by proper EQing. So to side chain, all we gotta do is make sure that the kick is highlighted, right click the 808 side chain to this track, add a limiter, change to compression, right click the side chain option down here, click, click the kick, put the ratio and knee all the way up. And what I like to do usually is just squash down that initial transient. Not too much because I find once you start to put it down here, the 808 just doesn't have enough power that it usually does. So just a little bit goes a long way. Now, now you're saying, bro, you just told us not to side chain and now you're telling us to side chain. Yes and no at the same time. You can side chain if the other problem areas are also fixed. That is gonna lead us into our third tip, which is carving out some space in the 808 so that the kick can have even more room to come through. So what do you mean by that? Let's go ahead and open up a parametric EQ. And this is something I talk about in the lives a lot because I noticed that the 808 and kick relationship is the hardest to get right. 
So let's go ahead and open up a parametric EQ on this kick and let's see where the bulk of the energy is coming from. It seems as though it's coming around 62 hertz or 60 hertz. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a parametric EQ on the 808, I already did that. And we're gonna go ahead and add a dip around 60 hertz. Not, not a crazy dip, nothing too crazy, just a little bit. just to give the kick more room to live. Last tip I wanna talk about, and before I end this, I'm gonna give you guys another example because not every kick and 808 relationship is the same. You're going to find new problems with the different 808 samples because at the end of the day, there are different sounds and not every sound has the same problem when you're trying to mix it with another one. All right guys, so the last tip I wanna talk about is actually combining the EQ technique where you carve out some space and also adding a side chain at the same time. This plugin is called F6 Mono from Waves. I love this plugin when I'm mixing 808s and kicks. So this is pretty much both of what we just did in one plugin. We can go ahead and get a nice little preset and kind of change this to where we want it. Add this dip around 60 Hertz and take this dip out. Now what this is gonna do, it's only going to dip down that frequency when the initial sample is played. It's pretty much doing the same thing that we just did both in one plugin. Now, you're probably thinking, bro, I don't have wave plugins. What are you, what are you talking about? I can't use that. How am I supposed to do this? Luckily, there is a way to do this without paid plugins and I'm gonna show you right now. So let's go ahead and just delete this. Now, shout out to Lifestyle Did It because he's the first person that I learned this trick from. In order for us to get that carving EQ and the little side chaining effect at the same time, what we have to do is open up a fruity peak controller on the kick and that's pretty much it. Go back to the 808, open up this parametric EQ, and take a band and whichever frequency that we want to dip, which would be 60 in this case, go ahead and take this band, whatever band, doesn't matter, um, to 60, right click that band over here on the right side and click link to controller. Now this is linked to the kick that we just put a peak controller on. So we're gonna go ahead and change this to peak control, change the input to inverted increment, and then change this to 0.5. Now, all we have to do is press accept and when we go ahead and play this, every time the kick hits at 60 hertz, there's going to be a dip. Pretty much allowing the bulk of the energy from this kick at 60 hertz to punch through these frequencies every time it hits. And like I said, as you guys can hear, this sounds way cleaner than before. If I go ahead and just take this off completely, that kick is cutting through the 808 almost completely. Pretty much that is what I would do for this situation. Now, every situation is different. I'm gonna go ahead and add a different 808 and show you that it's not the same. So let's go ahead and listen to the naked relationship between this 808 right here and this kick. And as you guys can see, it doesn't really sound the cleanest. There's like this little delay between the initial 808 and the kick. So for 808s like this, first thing I usually try is taking this uh, sample start knob and just moving it up a little bit just to take away some of that initial delay. Because if you guys hear, there's also some sort of a kick in front of this. So let's go ahead and take out some of those frequencies. And right around here is where I would stop. So let's go ahead and, and listen to that kick and 808 relationship now. Now you guys can hear the initial impact of the kick in the 808 is happening at the same time. So we've kind of dealt with the delay issue. So let's go ahead and try the first method. Now that we have the issue out the way, let's go ahead and hold everything, decay, sustain, release all the way down and try the little delay trick. And that sounds completely a hundred times better. Let's go ahead and go back to the original play the new version with a little bit of delay in there it's it's almost a night and day difference just with that little trick 
and now we even have more space to kind of move this 808 up all right so that worked really well let's go ahead and try to clean this up a little more i want to go ahead and add another parametric eq matter of fact let's just go ahead and skip the entire 60 hertz cut and go straight for the peak controller so we can go ahead and add a parametric eq drag this out to 60 which is already there right click again link to controller change this to inverted increment 0 0.5 and then change this to a peak so let's go ahead and move this time a little bit to the left around 60 what's that milliseconds and then accept and i do not necessarily like the way this sounds so let's go ahead and tighten this up that sounds a lot better those are my tips for cleaning up your kicks and 808s that's what i usually do i usually kind of mix and match some of these tips in combination to get the right mix the right 808 and kick relationship thank you guys for watching if you guys haven't already subbed hit that sub button right now hit that notification bell so you won't miss any content just like this and with that being said i'm out of here